Good morning, everyone. Um, since we're not a large number of people, if anyone has any questions at any point, feel free to ask. Um, so, uh, when representing members of the LGBT community, uh, there are two key standards to think about. Obviously, any time you uh, represent a client, you want to have respect for that client. Um, in the LGBT uh, situation, though, you want to know the proper and respectful terminology, and we're going to go over that. And then the other thing about uh, representing members of the LGBT community is that you got to keep current. Um, it's a very fast-moving environment, as I think the title of my program says, and things are constantly changing. I've been doing this for over 40 years, and there's probably a day that doesn't go by I don't learn something new. So um, if I'm learning stuff new, you got to learn stuff new too, um, in order to better, better represent uh, members of the community. So welcome to the 21st century. Um, and um, you know, uh, words that I used when I started practicing in the 1970s um, um, are no longer the proper words that we use anymore. Um, and so I want to talk to you about what is the proper nomenclature in the 21st century. Um, when I grew up, um, post-World War II, and I say pre-Stonewall, you know, I was, um, there were, you were either straight or gay, and you were either male or female. I mean, it was just, that's the way it was, one or the other. Well, all of those, what we call dyads, are now out of fashion and considered outdated. And both uh, sexual orientation and gender are on a continuum. And um, so, uh, for example, um, nomenclature, well, we've always talked about same-sex couples and opposite-sex couples. Well, if a trans man is married to what they call a cis woman, they're really not opposite sex. They're different sex. So within the community, we've dropped the use of the term opposite-sex couples, and we say different-sex couples. I think if you allied that into the conversation, no one's even going to notice, because they're going to understand immediately what different sex is, but it's not opposite. Um, so gender encompasses a wide variety of identities and expressions, which we're going to go over. And a sexual orientation can be very fluid as people grow and evolve. Um, and it includes uh, bisexuals, asexuals, pansexuals, and other self-descriptions. So um, I thought this was a very interesting quote from a, a young person asked in a survey about uh, gender. And this person said, let me be human, not a gender. The society seems pretty messed up to me about things like this. And then, uh, so that's a recent quote. But then you go back to Walt Whitman, and he talks about, do I contradict myself? Very well, then, I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. So people, you know, it's not just black or white or straight or gay. You can be a variety of things on different days. So obviously, these are the letters that uh, people are most generally uh, familiar with. Uh, L for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, Q, which now means queer or questioning. So where it used to be now the LGBT community, lots of times you'll see it's the LGBTQ community. Then there's intersex, and we'll talk a little about that. Uh, but the intersex community doesn't ally itself so much with the LGBT community, although it does have issues of similarity. Another very popular term these days is GNC, and I don't mean the vitamin store, <laughs> but gender nonconforming. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who are gender nonconforming. I have a daughter who's gender nonconforming. Thank you. She um, uh, uh, wears jeans and work boots. She's 40 years old, has a son, a grandson, my grandson, uh, but you know, wears jeans and boots and is a carpenter. Now, that's very gender nonconforming. Um, she doesn't conform to what the normal gender um, uh, expectations are. I, I was shocked when she recently told me that she's been challenged in bathrooms. So that's, you know, we have this whole issue out there and in, in the, uh, going on about bathrooms. I was shocked to find out my own daughter, who's always been a girl, always been attracted to boys. There was never any question about her being transgender or anything else. She was very much that. But because of the way she dressed, she got questioned. And then H for heterosexual. All right, so what is gender? So gender is a complex relationship between physical traits and one's internal self, of a sense of self as either male, female, or both. That's gender identity, how you identify yourself. 
And then there's gender expression, how you express yourself, your outward expression and behavior. Now, normally in the United States, when we're born, we are assigned either female or male. And uh, that based on physical attributes and characteristics determined by the physician, nurses at the time of birth. Um, and so that's what gets put on the birth certificate. That doesn't always necessarily align with someone's gender identity. And that's where you get this sense of transgender. So gender identity is a personally, deeply felt sense of being male, female, both, or neither. neither. And all of us have a gender identity. So when I started practicing law, um, and I was dealing with uh, lesbian and gay clients back in the 70s and 80s, and my first transgender client came through the threshold, I was totally blown away. I mean, I, I, I didn't, when I grew up, I didn't know anyone who was transgender. I don't imagine any, many people in this room knew anyone who was transgender when they were growing up. Um, and I had to work that concept and understand the difference between sexual orientation and gender identity. And I had thought, gee, um, uh, you know, I was coming out as a gay man. That was difficult enough. And I realized, my God, can you imagine having a situation where you realize that your anatomical characteristics don't match with who you think you are? So the gender binary is this, what we're trying to get away from. It's a system that constructs gender according to two discrete and opposite categories, male or female. So um, if you go in that, in that way, um, cisgender, this is a relatively new term. That's a term for people whose gender identity aligns with the sex that they were assigned at birth. So most of us are cisgender. What was put on our birth certificate is what we believe who we are. Um, transgender describes that person whose gender identity is different from what's generally con considered typical for their sex assigned at birth. So, you know, uh, you might get a cl some client walk in someday and say, I'm a, you know, a, a cis white guy, a gay guy. And you sort of have to unpack all of these terms and what they mean. But um, cis, the, the uh, abbreviation of cisgender has become very popular within um, the uh, LGBT community as a way to describe who you are. So as I said, gender expression is the external manifestation of your identity, which may or may not conform to socially defined behaviors um, and internal characteristics that are referred to as either masculine or feminine. The things like movement, how you dress, how you groom yourself, your hairstyles, jewelry, mannerisms, even your speech patterns and your voice. And gender nonconforming is people whose gender expression and behavior is different from the societal expectations or stereotypes related to that gender. Then we have a lot of people who are gender fluid or gender expressive. Um, they don't want to be pinned down to be the male or female, and they have a much wider and more flexible range of identities, and they may have them at different times on different days or on the same day. A lot of these people sometimes are called androgynous. Um, and uh, in the LGBT community, is a very popular term, gender queer, which refers to a person who does not accept the gender binary and refuses to conform to behavior of any gender stereotypical uh, behavior. So this is different than a cross-dresser. A cross-dresser is someone who dresses in clothing not typically worn by that assigned at birth, but who doesn't desire to live full-time as the other gender. They just enjoy getting dressed in clothes of the opposite gender. All right. Now, intersex. So that's biologically a person who was born with both female and male or non-conforming sexual genitalia or chromosomal differences that create a secondary sexual characteristics. Now, this is a uh, disability under the uh, American for Disabilities Act. There are many different types of intersex conditions. And you can imagine um, when someone is born intersex, someone has to make a decision in the hospital are they going to be male or female, um, and just assign that to them. And then that's how they get raised in our culture in a certain uh, gender even though that might not be correct. Um, and um, there have been instances where um, physicians have done surgery on infants born 
uh, with intersex characteristics to try and align them to what they think they should be, and then turns out, you know, as the person matures, they got it all wrong. And in fact, there's cases now going on where physicians are being sued for doing this type of surgery. So transgender, working with transgender people, that's an umbrella term uh, for people's gender identity and gender expression different from the one assigned at birth. Not all transgender people want to live as the sex opposite of the one they're assigned at birth. They can cross dress. They could be just gender nonconforming. Um, they don't live. They gender queer. They don't live in this binary manner. But they all fall under this general term of transgender. Transgender is an adjective. It's not a noun or a verb. And even people in the uh, community, have, you know, can get this wrong. But Tony is a transgender man. Not Tony is a transgender, or Tony is transgendered. So a transgender man is a term for an individual who was assigned female at birth, currently identifies as a man. We shorten this to trans man. So he's a trans man. Same with a trans woman. That is someone who was assigned male at birth, but identifies as a woman. Transsexual is an alternative term for transgender. Um, <coughs> and people who, um, who uh, often on a full-time basis live their lives as members of the opposite sex, uh, uh, the uh, one that they were assigned at birth, are transsexual. Um, and, uh, it, now, uh, being transgender doesn't mean you necessarily have to take hormones or have surgery. It just means that you believe that your gender identity doesn't match up with what's on your birth certificate. Um, Transgender is the more popular term and probably should be used rather than transsexual. Transphobia is the irrational fear or hatred of, uh, of uh, people who are trans and the crimes per perpetrated against them. So when a person decides that they're going to live as the opposite uh, sex of the one assigned at birth, that's referred to as transitioning or going through a gender affirmation process. You know, we take all these words and we euphemize them and make them sound better and more. And this comes out of the transgender community. They don't want to say they're transitioning. They're affirming who they are. Um, usually it starts with psychological counseling. And then if it's successful, follow with medical and legal procedures. So that's called the process of self-authorization. There are three phases of that. Obviously, the social, when one starts to present him or herself to society, family, friends, and all as a person of the uh, opposite sex. Then there are the legal issues, um, getting your name changed, um, getting your gender markers changed on your birth certificate, on your passport, the social security. Um, right now in New Jersey, you can't get your birth certificate gender marker changed unless you've had surgery. This is a very hot topic in the transgender community because they believe that they should have their birth, and I agree with them, they should have their birth certificate aligned for who they think they are, and they don't, shouldn't have to go out and do some surgery, um, uh, desecrate their body just to uh, satisfy some authority who thinks that they know who this person is. But right now in New Jersey, you have to have surgery. The legislature twice has passed legislation to take away that surgical requirement but Governor Christie has vetoed it. So I expect in 2018, that surgical requirement will go away. Um, medical, that's another uh, part of the process of self-authorization. Normally, people take hormones. Um, and uh, some people do do surgery. Um, there's all different types of surgery. And it's, uh, there's this common misconception that you just need one gender change operation. But actually, it's many. Um, a, a trans woman who's transitioning from being a man to a woman does a lot of electrolysis to get rid of all this stuff on the face, might do gender uh, facial reconstruction. Um, a woman um, who's becoming a man might do a, 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 a hysterectomy, etc. So uh, right now, um, in the uh, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, uh, there is a diagnosis for something called gender dysphoria. Um, and that is a strong and persistent cross-gender identification and discomfort with um, the uh, gender you were assigned at birth. And uh, 
unless you actually know a trans person, you may not realize how significant and how debilitating it is to think that you're in the wrong body and have that all through your life. Um, and leads to a lot of people to a really significant depression and even suicide. It's, um, you know, it's a hard thing to swallow and to accept about oneself. So we've got to have a lot of um, uh, uh, empathy for transgender people. Um, in Denmark, just this year, they no longer define being transgender as a mental illness, um, like they do in the United States. And then are there are cultures around the world where it has been recognized for centuries that there are more than one uh, gender. Yes? I, I, Denmark is, as far as I know, the first country and only country that doesn't define it as a mental illness. I don't know about Thailand. Denmark, do they recognize transgender people as a separate gender? Um, they don't recognize it as illness. Uh, but you know, in India, for example, they do have um, uh, on your identity documents a third gender marker. Uh, um, and there was a recent case where someone from India was applying to come to the United States and applied for a visa. And the State Department didn't know how to issue the visa because they can only issue visas to men and women. So they had to come up with a third term. So, you know, um, I mentioned here in Hawaii, there's a culture that uh, respects uh, transgender and sees just transgenders as a, a, a different um, gender. Um, and the same in Native American culture. So as I mentioned, there's this misconception out there that there's just one surgical procedure. Um, but there are actually many. Uh, so some of them, you know, mastectomy, facial surgery, genital reconstruction. But it's not required to do these to be transgender. Uh, consider yourself a transgender person. Though it is very scary for them. For example, uh, I have a friend who's a judge in Texas who's transgender. And um, you know, it's just like Caitlyn Jenner. So many of these, these uh, trans women start out to be these macho men. She, so my friend is a judge, used to be a quarterback. <laughs> you know, they always go for the, you know, or, or uh, Caitlyn Jenner won, won the decathlon, you know? Um, so she is a quarterback. She's now a, a trans woman, a judge in Texas. And her passport says F. But she's worried, you know, like she goes to Mexico on vacation and ends up in a hospital and they undress her. They're gonna, things are not going to align. So something you've got to worry about. Um, hormones. So that's a, one of the uh, ways to facilitate the development of secondary sexual characteristics as part of a medical transition process. And a lot of people will undergo that. Um, so um, if you're transitioning from female to male, you might take testosterone. If you're transitioning from male to female, you'll take estrogen and, uh, and androgen blockers. And this is what's happening, you know, again, when I was growing up way back uh, then, uh, I didn't know any transgender people. Um, I don't I know if there were any transgender people in my class. But um, now, kids are coming out as trans much earlier. I and mean, parents are much more sensitive to it as well. So rather than starting to do a transition process for a teenager, what most of the time they try to do is just block the um, uh, attainment of the sexual secondary, secondary sexual characteristics to give the uh, uh, adolescent time and wait till really they're 18 to figure out what uh, they want to do. So they try to postpone puberty. So words not to use, which are either outdated or considered offensive, obviously tranny, she-male, he-she, it, uh, call somebody you know, a, a transvestite, um, or talk about their sex change operation. Um, because it sounds like you only think it's just, you know, you go in and go under the knife once. Um, if it's not possible to ask a transgender person which pronoun she or he prefers, then you just use whatever consistent with how they're presenting themselves, their appearance, their gender expression. So if you have a client walk in the office and um, they present themselves as female, you go with female. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, okay, next. Um, obviously, 
uh, use their chosen name, even if it's not their legal name. Um, I, I do a lot of uh, name changes for transgender people through uh, legal services, um, because a lot of them can't afford to go through the whole process of doing a, a name change, which costs, you know, just the uh, filing fees and the publication fees, et cetera, about $500. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes people also just live, uh, you know, by uh, a lot of people we know use other than their birth names, like a celebrity, and so just um, go with that. Also, which I find um, harder to adjust to, is uh, members of the trans community or people who are gender non-conforming use they and their as, um, I guess it's, um, uh, first uh, person pronouns. So I, and I was like, well, that sounds strange. How can you use they or there? They say, well, think of it this way. You say, look, somebody left their phone. I bet they're upset that they don't know where their phone is. Well, that's because you don't know if it's a he or she. So you said there. And so that's how uh, that, so you might find that, come across that people using they and their for singular um, pronouns. Moving on to sexual orientation. So that is a term describing a person's attraction to members of the same gender and or different gender. Um, a sexual orientation and gender identity are different concepts. And that's very important. If you walk away with anything from today, is to know that those are not the same. Just because you're trans doesn't mean you're gay. And just because you're gay doesn't mean you're trans. <laughs> um, so uh, this whole process of heterosexual and homosexual really only came into being in the late 19th century. And before that, they didn't really make distinctions about um, uh, um, people as they were heterosexual or homosexual. They might have defined acts they did as heterosexual or homosexual, but they didn't categorize people. Um, and of course, um, being homosexual um, was uh, prior to uh, the late 20th century illegal. Many people who were gay were institutionalized, lobotomized. Um, uh, they've lost jobs, uh, certainly couldn't get a security clearance, social rejection, and it's still illegal in many parts of the world. So gay is a term used to describe a man who is sexually and emotionally attracted to other males. Um, and it's a general descriptive term sometimes for gay men and lesbians, so I think lesbians prefer to be called lesbians. A lesbian is a term used to describe a female who is sexually and emotionally attracted to other females. Bisexual, a term used to describe a male or female who is sexually and emotionally attracted to both sexes. Questioning, so that's the person who is still unsure and is questioning their sexual orientation. I think, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. But then there's heterosexual or straight um, and that's a term to describe people who are sexually and emotionally attracted to persons of the opposite sex. Okay. So um, the term homosexual has become a, an offensive one, actually, even though it's, uh, it, because it's, it has a, a clinical history around it, it's, um, and it sounds like uh, you somehow believe the person is ill or diseased um, or psychologically or emotionally uh, disordered. And so it, it's really the more accepted term is to say gay or lesbian than to say homosexual. And that's because it has this clinical attachment to it, and they use this term like the homosexual agenda um, um, as a disparaging term. So and back in the late 1970s, um, the American Psychological uh, Association, the American Psychiatric Association, um, de determined that uh, being gay or lesbian was no longer a psychological disorder. Um, and they're no longer a danger to society. Nice to know. Um, so an offensive term is sexual preference, because it sounds like it's a choice that you just prefer this, but you could do that. And you know, we always say to straight people, do, you know, is that your sexual preference, that you really could be gay, but you just prefer being straight? <laughs> and it, does, you know, it sort of implies that you could be cured. So uh, the preferred is sexual orientation or orientation. Um, and that's the, be the description of an individual's physical, romantic, or emotional attraction to members of the same or opposite sex. 
offensive terms, as we've talked about homosexual, to use homosexual. You know, why you say that you know, he's in a homosexual relationship? That is already starting to be offensive. He's in a relationship with a man, maybe. You know, and, uh, they're a couple. They're not a homosexual couple. If, or they're a same-sex couple. Um, and identifying a same-sex couple as a homosexual couple or a homosexual relationship can be offensive, should be avoided. Um, they're usually used by anti-gay extremists. Um, so as a rule, just avoid labeling any activity, emotion, or relationship as homosexual, um, unless you would do the same for your straight clients. Um, in most uh, situations, listeners will be able to discern a person's sexual orientation uh, through the names of the parties involved and the depictions of their relationships and use of pronouns. So um, an offensive term would be gay lifestyle or homosexual lifestyle. I mean, um, somebody could say, I live you know, um, a lifestyle, of a, a suburban lifestyle, because I live in the suburbs. But to say I live a gay lifestyle suggests that, again, it's a choice, that, uh, that it can be cured, um, um, and it's not an innate characteristic. Um, there is no single lesbian, gay, or bisexual lifestyle, and we're diverse and lead many types of lives. Another term, which I used to hear, hear less of, he's an admitted homosexual, or he's an avowed homosexual. Um, uh, as this was, again, used as a way um, to make it shameful or inherently secretive, and that you avowed it. So it's preferred to just say you're openly lesbian, openly gay, openly bisexual, or just simply out. Um, you can describe a person as out. Um, Ricky Martin is an out pop star from Puerto Rico, you could say, rather than just saying you know, he's an avowed homosexual. Um, derogatory language that you shouldn't use and shouldn't allow anyone else to use um, you probably know all these things, fag, faggot, dyke, homo, sodomite. Um, these are um, very offensive, um, normally used as a way to demean uh, people in the LGBTQ community um, and reveals the bias of the person who's um, saying it. Um, so, even, so, for example, um, I think this comes out of the... Um, uh, uh, media guide um, on this. Um, if you use such words, they give credibility um, in the medium and other forms. So normally, if somebody's called a faggot, what they'll say is this person uses a derogatory word for a lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender person. Um, so don't allow other people to use it. Other terms that are also derogatory, deviant, disordered, dysfunctional, disease, perverted, um, these are all less favored. And if you have a client that ha is you know, a member of the LGBT community, you shouldn't use these terms. Um, and again, this comes out of uh, a lot of uh, the past history of discrimination against people in the community. They've been accused of being pedophiles or child abusers or involved in adultery or um, other types of antisocial behavior. And there is no correlation between being a member of this community and being involved in any of these particular antisocial behaviors. Um, so it doesn't have any um, tendency towards any of these things. And um, you shouldn't insinuate that L by saying this, you're insinuating that members of the LGBT community are a threat to society and to children in particular. OK. So I, this is my last slide. And I think it, it very interesting shows that there are four ways that you can break down uh, what a person is. There, there's their expression, how they express themselves. There's their identity, what their head tells them who they are. There's their attraction, who they're attracted to, what their heart tells them they're attracted to. And then there's genitalia, who tells them what at least society or science says is their sex. So these are the four components for a person. Um, whether they are, uh, you know, how they express themselves to the outside world, how they self-identify, who they're attracted to, and finally, you know, what their uh, genitalia tells them 
um, scientifically, I guess, um, how they, you know, uh, at least their physical characteristics are. So you can have any combination of this, and that's why it's on a continuum, because people do different things and are different in different places at different parts of their lives. Um, you know, they might uh, have an attraction to people of uh, the same sex uh, at one point in their lives and then move on to people of the opposite sex or just be bisexual. Um, and I want to um, talk a little bit about it. It's not on these slides, but um, asexuals. So this is a term that is sort of current to me um, and um, new. Um, and it's, I'm told it comprises about 1% of uh, the population. And these are people who are just not interested in having sex. Now, it doesn't mean that they want to be celibate and um, uh, isolated from other people. They're just not interested in having sex. But they might want to have a romantic relationship. So they are, um, they could be heteroromantic or homoromantic or biromantic. Um, but just not interested in having sex, at least at this time. They call themselves aces. So those people are out there. Um, you know, we're finding out more all the time about who we are. Um, and the other fact I just learned last night, I find this almost hard to believe, but um, it came out from the Williams Institute at UCLA, which is a very respected um, think tank. Um, and among teenagers today, the Williams Institute reports that one out of Every 137 teenagers is transgender. That's a much higher percentage of the population, I would have thought, that were transgender. But I think younger people just look at this so differently. You know, they're, they're much more fluid. They're, they're much more accepting. And that's what, you know, they, they don't understand why these adults are all hung up on trying to put everyone in a classification. So um, does anyone have any questions about any of this? Yes. Yeah. Um, going back to sexual orientation, when, so whom you're attracted to, is that their I, expression, so, or is there no clear, so like if I'm, so someone who's gay, so, mm -hmm. terms, so does that mean that they're attracted to someone who's biologically male, or whose gender expression, is that of a man, like, do you, can you, I, was I, I can speak to that. Okay, I, I identify as a gay man, though I probably shouldn't identify as bisexual. I was married. I left my marriage because, uh, and because I wanted to be a gay man, and I immediately fell in a relationship with another woman. All right, but I persevered and I became gay, and I'm married to a man. Okay, <laughs> all right. But you know, so here I am out in the outside world. I'm checking out all the men, and you know, I see this hot guy over there. Then I learned out he's a trans man. So it's his express, you know, how he's expressing himself. It's not his, I'm not attracted to his genitalia. I don't know what's going on down there. I was just express how he expressed himself. So, you know, it, it can get confusing out there. <laughs> so, you know, maybe I'm, I'm pansexual because I've been attracted to women, had relationships with women. I'm, a, I'm married to a man, but I've been attracted to trans men. So, you know, it's all out there. Is pansexual then a term that essentially is the same as bisexual, or is there a difference between bisexuality and... That's a good question. I, I'm not sure I know the answer. <laughs> I, I, I mean, to me, bisexual means you're attracted to people of both sexes. But then you're also breaking it down saying, I'm attracted to men and women. And you're leaving out all the gender nonconforming or the trans people. So maybe when you say you're pansexual, you say, I'm open to being attracted to anyone out there on the spectrum, okay. not just bi. So Which if is, a client identifies themselves to you as pansexual, it just means that they're open to all of the possibilities. Right. Yeah. Well. Is the term queer considered derogatory? Is it more that, that's a good question because it, you know it's um, it's been reclaimed. Um, certainly, in this part of the country, um, a lot of universities have queer study programs. A lot of young people identify themselves as queer. I, on occasion, identify myself as queer because it's, it's, it's a broader term. It includes LGBTQIH, you know, it's everything. On the other hand, I have friends and colleagues in the South who practice LGBT family law, and they're highly offended by the term queer. It you know, still has a lot of baggage that they carry around from uh, when they were kids in the schoolyard. So it depends. But you know, queer is the, a coming term, definitely. Yeah. So, um, is it 
issue now of the general neutral bathrooms, right? Uh, which is going to be in news. Assuming for a moment that the current administration's position may be correct, that it's one of states' rights, mm -hmm. do you have a feeling or, or, uh, as to how New Jersey, uh, how our legislature would uh, uh, react uh, to that or vote in that regard? Uh, I think um, it, uh, it's um, pretty clear. Well, in New Jersey, uh, gender identity is part of the law against discrimination. So you can't discriminate based on somebody on gender identity. So I, I'm, um, uh, I think only 12 school districts so far have um, passed trans uh, policies for their schools. But my guess is New Jersey is going to be a, a state which honors what a young person um, uh, feels is their sexual identity and lets them use facilities commensurate with that. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you. Well.